<clears throat> Try again. I'm I, I'm not getting any prompts here to say that I should. Uh, Yeah. Which is something I've forgotten to do on web gotcha. webinars before, which is uh and so let's get this started. Hello and welcome to the online course coaching podcast. And today's guest is a full time hip hop rock artist having sold over three hundred thousand albums and performed over a thousand shows in twenty one countries. He also sells online courses on Udemy and Skillshare, plus he has his own membership site. It's with great pleasure that I welcome Chris Greenwood, Acca Manifest, to the show. Welcome, great Chris. Yeah, thanks so much for having me. Thanks for waking up so early, and I'm glad our schedules could collide now on a on a good path here. So, yeah, really excited to be here. Yeah, no, it's it's wonderful to have you here. And I said I've I've had a look through your gear, um, and it's in, it's impressive. So I know that you've got a lot of really uh, useful and interesting information to to share with uh you know with the listeners mm -hmm. so to start with can you just give a little bit of a background about yourself yeah absolutely um i started my, my full-time career is, is music and over the last year and a half i started dabbling into online courses um i wrote a book i guess is where it started um it was called fighter five keys to conquering fear and reaching your dreams it's kind of like a self-help motivational book because fear was just something that really um controlled my life for a long time and just stopped me from really stepping out and taking action like creating online courses. Um, and I just really wanted to get my message out there in a deeper and more positive way. And that got me into the whole world of um, Brendan Bouchard and online courses and webinars and eBooks. And it's just like, how do I, how do I market this thing? And so I kind of found myself in this rabbit hole trail, just trying to find information and figure it out. And, you know, it's amazing how you, you, you start to latch on to certain authors or certain speakers just because for some reason they connect with you, their story or whatnot. And I just found a real connection with, with Brendan. And so I, I bought his program, a uh, total product blueprint you know, as a $2,000 course. And uh, I think I must have watched his free videos. Like, I don't know how many times I got so much value out of just the free stuff I, that I was just like, man, I've got to sign up for this. And it also gave me tickets to his experts Academy as well. And so I attended that and trying to figure out, you know, I'd already built an email list with my music and stuff. So I was familiar with that end of things, but this selling courses and all this stuff and in books and marketing, it was a, it was a brand new world. And um, honestly, it wasn't until last year I launched my first course on Udemy. And that was actually from listening to a completely different podcast other than Brendan. It was uh, internet business mastery. I don't know if you're familiar with those guys, yes. yeah. but um, they're, they're talking about Udemy and I was like, Oh, that's cool. And it just, was so not easy, but it just felt like the system they had to go through and create and put your course together. I just remember sitting in a Starbucks and just typing this thing. And I was like, I got to do this thing. And, uh, and I just want to say, even for the people that are listening, like when I was creating that course, I had doubt, I had fears and I was standing in front of this. My, we had a great camera, we had a DLSR camera. We had the, 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 the pro mic and my wife setting it up and we're filming it. But in the back of my mind, I gotta be honest. I was just like, should I do this? Should I do this? And, and, and we did it and we launched it and, you know, I made a couple hundred bucks the first month, which was, which is great. Um, but didn't really start to get serious until I guess March last year, where there's somebody else on the internet space that I really connected to. And they really encouraged me to um, raise my prices. And there's one thing that I've realized with online courses or eBooks or books or just being a information person that we really devalue what we know. We think just because we know it, that it's not worth something to somebody else. And that's where I've come to really understand that I really need to start monetizing things I know. And, and so I know I start looking through my whole list of skills and I'm like, well, you know, maybe someone doesn't know about that. Maybe somebody doesn't know about that. And I, it's amazing when I put it out there and some of the things that I've, I've put out there, cause I've, I've created about 22 courses now on Udemy. And it's amazing. The ones that are really connected with people. It's not the one that maybe I thought, you know? And so that's where I, I, I really believe in that. One of my favorite quotes is just that action fuels success that you just got to put yourself out there. Mm. You know, there's, there's, there's a lot of gems in there, Chris, and I can't agree more with you there and 
I haven't done Brendan's course. I, I did follow Brendan. I've, I've been following Brendan for for quite some time. I my money, well, my hammered in my pocket for my credit card, but yeah, <laughs> Evan Pagan. And once again, yes. that was like a like a two thousand dollar course. Well, that's one of the two thousand dollar courses I've done. I've, I've also spent a lot of time, was a lot of money and time, mm-hmm. learning marketing and, and and product production as well. And I think that's something that you know, some of us do sort of go into. We, we look at things at a, at a deeper level, and you're right about people devaluing their knowledge. People, I think, as you're saying, now you're coming back to the fear and you're saying, what do I know? Why would somebody want to learn from me? And the point is, you know a lot and people do want to learn from you. People, you know, people want to learn who they learn from, who they connect with. So some very, very valuable information there. So we know that you know, Udemy has, has gone through a number of changes and you're talking about you know, raising your prices, and that's mm-hmm. something that that I've done. I've got a. I'm actually going down another line where I've actually restructured my premium course, and I've and I've uh, like like a chef does. What, you know, what they call it a, a deconstructed course now, where I I made up this premium course for for four hundred ninety seven dollars. Now I've sort of re- deconstructed it down into a tripwire offer, a a core offer, and then a continuity program, which is probably okay. something that that very similar to what you've done when we come to talk about membership sites. So yeah. we know that with Udemy, they have now capped prices, a high and a low, mm-hmm. which makes it very hard to, if you've got something of great value, it's very hard to sort of share that on the Udemy platform and get what it's worth. So yeah. what changes now are you, are you going through as far as raising your prices and, and, and getting value? Yeah, um, it's it's frustrating that they have lowered the 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 highest amount that you can charge is fifty dollars now, and you know I definitely think that you know some of the stuff I'm teaching and other teachers you're teaching is worth more than fifty dollars, and so they really capped it at that, and that's just their model, and that's why I'm so glad that I've built an email list and that I've also started this membership site, which we'll talk about later, which is, you know, recurring revenue, um, where what I was chatting with my man, Dave, who I can see is on here. We were actually hanging out in Disneyland earlier today. Well, not Disneyland, downtown Disney at Starbucks. We are hanging out, but um, we were talking about this stuff and just the idea that that is one income stream. My Udemy is one income stream, or maybe it's uh, a place where I'm just getting traffic and people finding finding me. Um, but before, you know, last year, that was my main thing, and that's where I was. I was selling courses. I, I'd get people through my email funnel, and I'd try and provide as much value as possible, sending them the three videos and whatnot. And then I would pitch them at my course for maybe one ninety seven, two ninety seven, and I was sharing that like maybe out of a hundred emails, I'd get maybe two three sales um, at the 197. Well, I can't do that on Udemy anymore. No. I can't point them there um, for one thing. Um, and so I'm going to maybe going to have to ho- host my course on Teachable or maybe host it on my own site or Kajabi. Uh, I'll be honest right now, the way my email funnel is going right now, it's actually getting people to go into my membership site. And so I yes. offer uh, um, them to join my my monthly membership, which is um, $29. And there's also one where they can pay the annual um, uh, for like two ninety nine, plus they get like a free coaching, and that's something else we can maybe talk about is the whole coaching mm. thing. But um, at the same time, not everybody wants to sign up for a monthly thing. Somebody does like that reoccurring thing. I think may freak some people out, where some people would just rather spend five hundred dollars, ninety seven dollars, and just pay the one and just just solve my problem with the one course. I don't want all the other stuff. But so I'm gonna have to create another funnel that's going to have to sell the higher priced course. Um, and I might, I, at one time what I did once, and uh, this is just an idea. I don't you, you think of this, Tim, but um, uh, I would, I would take, I'd give them the sales page to buy the course and, but it wouldn't go to you to me, but then my autoresponder would just send them a PDF of all the links to the courses on Udemy because I'm not self hosting it anywhere. Cause Udemy is so nice. You don't have to pay the fee and you can host mm-hmm. all the videos and stuff. And so, you know, I'm still building it, but definitely now that the price has changed with Udemy at the $50, um, I'm going to have to eventually go somewhere else to get those higher priced points because, you know, Udemy has been a great start. It's It's gotten me started. It's making me great money every single month. And for anyone who has never created a course, like I would suggest, like start there, just get in the game. 
You know, he's got to get mm. in the game. Mm. He's got to start. And uh, but eventually, I think if you want to make the higher dollars, um, I think it's premium courses. Personally, you know, I know there's the guys that are crushing it, doing thirty thousand a month plus on Udemy, um, and that's through the I think that you know more of the the multi course creation strategy um, from what I've seen. Mm. You mm. Know? Yeah, now, I I once again agree wholeheartedly with you, and my time on Udemy has has changed. I've I'm not going to be doing too much there. I've been approached to do some some co-creation, and I'll do that. But yeah, I think for me, like the model, I look at I look at Udemy as I look at well, I wouldn't say eBay, but as I look at say Amazon with you no know, with the Kindle books, and and I don't even know these days whether Udemy is going to be a good lead generation into a premium course based on the fact that now they are targeting those bargain value hunter, mm -hmm. like the people who will only put their hand in the pocket. Okay, so if you list your price for $50 and then you discount it to 50% or whatever, you, right. you're only going to be, be attracting the people who are at that bottom end of the scale, like, like the mass volume, low, no low price. So that's something that I'll, I'll probably investigate a little bit further down the track as to whether that's actually a viable option even for a lead generation because that's what I, I used to teach I, I used to teach you know put something up on Udemy and then use that as a lead generation across to your premium but that's when you could still like when I came into Udemy and this was 2014 or something or other okay there wasn't there, there wasn't a cap no there wasn't there the wasn't a cap right not even the 300 wasn't even not not, not even the 300 it was I saw I saw one course on there. Some bloke had thirty thousand dollars on it, and I I don't know whether he just did that just to just to to price it out because he, did, he didn't want to sell it anymore because I don't know right. anybody because right. because the, the course obviously didn't look like a thirty thousand dollar course. But yeah. you know, um, and even uh, Alan Alan Hill, whatever his name is, he was sorry, Alan. I know I know your name, but he was he was selling pro courses up there at, at four ninety seven or whatever. Not. Not, nothing outrageous, and so these these big these you know, these big figures, these big monthly figures, came in based on that, and then they came and they and they kept it at three hundred, and that sort of annoyed a few a few instructors. And I suppose to you know, for me, because I know a lot of instructors, and I know a lot, a lot of instructors now have left their full time job, and they just rely totally on the income model based that that, that Udemy gave them. And then, then you didn't come along, and they and, and they cut a three hundred dollar cap to a fifty dollar cap. That's that's huge. That's that's going to that's going to sting quite a few yeah. instructors. And I think the instructors that had the foothold, so who already had a big following, a, a big student list, are, are probably still going to go okay on on Udemy because you know, if you if you're going through a list and, and and there's two courses, and there's one course there with with a, a hundred reviews and and, and twenty thousand students. And then there's another course there with five reviews and and two thousand students. Which one are you going to go? Yeah. And the yeah. and the other issue with no, no, with Udemy is when we come to promotion and, and we actually come to putting our hands in our own pockets and spending our own money. The thing that that sort of puts me off about sending people to Udemy on my dollar is that when they come to the sales page for my course, when they scroll down, they they actually cross promote other other instructors' courses, so they can actually click off my course. And into another instructor, so I, I can actually be paying the marketing to sell the course for another instructor. So, so those are some issues. But on the upside for Udemy, as you said, it's a very easy system put together. They do all the hosting for you. They have the, the framework there for you. They they give you the training. They mm -hmm. they they have a very very high level of quality control. I wouldn't say they've got yeah a, well production control, not quality. But they, they they obviously can't control the quality or, or, or the content of a course because they don't have obviously that many content experts. And I think that's the other problem. There's a lot of rubbish on, on you to me. Like people saw it as, you know, the, you know, you know, the money making machine and I'll just throw some, some rubbish up there. Yeah. But for somebody starting, it's, it's a great place because they can put their course together. It's got to go through that approval process. They're going to come back and say, you know, your audio quality is this or your video quality is that. Here's what you can do to fix it. So it's a great place to start. But yeah, I agree. I agree. It's a great place to learn. And um, I, I don't like sending people to the, you know, if I have my sales page and that's where, you know, I would suggest to people to maybe 
you know, take them to your sales page and then have your like go through your cart, whether that's PayPal or Gumroad or um, whatever payment processing you can have, and then have your email send them a link to a free link to your course because they already paid. But that way you've got them in. And that way, whether you want to do the 30 day money back guarantee or not, and not have to worry mm -hmm. about refunds. And that's what, you know, something to think about as well too. But, you know, they do do the marketing, you know, and, and that's the thing too, is that they do provide some marketing and uh, that's what they, they say they are doing it by, um, you know, last month seemed to go down a little bit with the change and whatnot. I think that a lot of instructors were experiencing that, but you know, there's always opportunity. I think a lot of instructors left too. Like we know that Alan Hill has, has left and uh, I'm sure he's not the only one. And, you know, it depends what your, your business model is and what you want to do. And, you know, right now it isn't my main thing. It's, it's doing very mm. well. And what I was sharing um, with Dave earlier today was that, you know, I've, it took me a long time to build my music business into something substantial. And I've put years and years, but um, compared that to how much time I put into my online course stuff, it is just the investment the versus the reward is just amazing. Like I've just set money on fire to promote myself in, in music and got no results where mm. with, um, with Udemy and online course creation, I find like the, the, the entry level and the cost just to get in is just so low and the rewards are just potentially so big. And it's, so it's just like, you know, you gotta, you gotta put yourself out there and, and be willing to risk, you know? Mm -hmm. I think if you're going to go on to Udemy, because yes, Udemy does boast a 11 million students and that sort of stuff, but it depends on, the, the topic that you're teaching and, and, and there are topics that are hot and topics that are not. And if you're in a really, really niche market, it may not really do that well on the Udemy platform, but just because it doesn't do well on Udemy doesn't mean it's not going to do well somewhere else. Whereas, and, and, and I think there is a, there, there is a link on Udemy, a, a what's hot link or something rather. And yeah. it will actually list what topics, you know, we know, we know that marketing is a, you know, is a big one. Anything to do with social media, um, anything to do with programming, mm -hmm. they are they are big, they are big. Yeah, the but programming just, one is really big. I, I know nothing mm -hmm. about that. I would have to be a co-instructor <laughs> course, which I, I haven't done um, one yet. My wife has a couple courses, and we're thinking of doing a co-instructor course. But I look forward to, you know, leveraging somebody else's uh, knowledge and, and coming together on it and, and uh, putting courses together and you know cranking them out faster too. But but we talk about come back to the premium mm -hmm. and I was reading a, a blog post or I was watching a video of an, of a YouTube instructor who was very happily displaying his, his, his lifetime income on Udemy and he'd made $200,000. He, he has a, a series of uh, iOS programming courses, right? So he, so he'd made 200,000 on Udemy Okay, and you think, you think that's a lot of money, and it is a lot of money. There's nothing to be sneezed at, right? But that's within the Udemy framework. Right. Now, you go to Teachable, and those guys who do that uh, million-dollar instructor course, the guys from Bitfountain, they also have iOS courses, right? Now, they saw the writing on the wall at Udemy, and so they left and they went on and, and sort of co-developed or helped out at, at Teachable. But the point is those guys have made over $2 million selling the yeah. same type of courses right exactly, yeah. so we, we talk about we talk about platform we talk about premium and at the end of the day yeah two hundred thousand sounds like like big dollars but don't don't get stuck and say this is this is where it's all at because there's a big world out there and saying do them do the maths you know get the you know, get the calculator out and you and you calculate what 11 million is and i think it works out to be about uh, three percent of the U.S. population, let alone the rest of the world, right? So it's still very much a fishbowl, and there's there's ways. So let's so let's talk about and 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 please, guys, we know, know we've got a, a great bunch of people in here listening live. If you've got any questions at all, just put a slash Q in your question, and Chris will be happy to answer that if it's on topic, obviously. And then at the end of this this formal interview process, we will be opening up that seat and you can jump on and talk live. But please, please feel free to interact and ask some questions as well. Okay, so so let's come back to the to the promotion because this is where most people like I know in my you know, in my coaching people usually have 
two questions, right? Because yeah. I don't, I don't, I don't get sort of tied up so much in the production side. There's, there's so many courses out there on how to, how to make a video, how to do this, how to do that. So I don't, and and that changes so often anyway. But there are some, there are some classic things that just don't change. So the two questions that that, that I have is, is firstly topic selection. How do I know that my course is going to succeed? But the other, but the other one is I've created my course. Now what? Now how do I? I've I've built it. Now I, I expect them to come, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and they're not. So how can I fix that? Yeah, well, there's a couple of things, and uh, for me, uh, my main marketing strategies are Facebook, Facebook ads. Um, I do, we do a lot of Facebook ads and finding other people's pages that are similar to your audience. Um, some of my stuff was um, music business. So I was looking up my competitors. And, you know, one thing I'll say, it's good if there's a competitor out there. It's not a bad thing. That doesn't mean that, you know, you shouldn't create it. There's already courses out there. It's like, no, you've already approved that it works and your idea is good because you're going to teach it in a completely different style, right? Like the way, Tim, you would teach a course on, you know, Bitcoin. Then I would teach on Bitcoin or whatever it is or getting yeah. out of debt. You know, you have your own story. I have my own story. And that's where we bring our personality to it. And um, so finding competitors and you like with Facebook ads, it's so amazing how you can target the page and do um, what we did was um, some video uh, Facebook ads. And it, it would be something similar where you're just saying, hey, my name's Chris and um, this 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 has happened to me. This is how I lost weight and whatnot. Um, click the link below to download my free, you know, recipes or my my di my diet plan or my fitness scan. Let me give you my free course on how I did this or whatnot. And. People click that below and you just give them something for an email address and then you start building that relationship. And again, that's paying money. You got to pay for Facebook ads. Um, the f other way I like to do it is um, YouTube, is uh, having a YouTube channel. And what I do is I take a lot of my videos from my courses and I just upload those to YouTube. Um, what I like to do before, though, is use the Google keyword tool and see what people what terms people are searching for that I'm trying to sell and so I'll create a video based on what's searched the most and that's something mm. I think we forget we just create videos well well let's find out what people are searching for and use the free google keyword tool inside the google adwords and see what people are looking for like how to make money online, how to market Udemy courses, like what's the most popular search okay well I need to make a video on that on whatever the the niche is um, that they're selling. And that, that's a, the really great way. Um, so Facebook, YouTube, there's obviously tons of other ones, you know, Blab, uh, making yourself yeah. available, right? Um, some of the offline stuff is, is if you, if you're a speaker or whatnot is letting people know, you know, and getting, getting the word about mouth out and emailing people and letting your friends know like, Hey, I'm starting to do this. Um, I think mm -hmm. is a really powerful way, but I think it's important to not, be everywhere all at once or else you're going to stress yourself out. Like you could do mm. a podcast as well too, right? Like um, I do have a podcast, but I, I'm not focusing on that because it's not bringing me the best leads, but is it a great way to get some free traffic and, you know, do interviews like, you know, Tim, we're, I'm just stoked that we're talking because we're building a relationship. And I, I just love this stuff like with marketing, mm. but like I reached out to you and said, Hey, let I, I heard you were on this. Let's talk about that. And, um, you know, I'm getting introduced to a new audience and you're getting introduced to some of my audience and we're growing, growing together. Right. And, and both, uh, uh, betting, benefiting from that and helping people at the same time. And that's what I think what that needs to come back to. And sorry if I'm rambling on, but don't get so caught up in the sale, but remember why you're doing this. Cause you want to help people. You want to bring value and you, and you want to see live like, yes, I want to make money. Like, let's not get, let's mm. not get that wrong. I want to make money selling my information, but I'm also interested in seeing lives get transformed by what I know because, you know, my life has changed and, you know, like it's changed by selling online courses, having that passive income and, you know, and I know it'll impact other people's too. Right. So. Absolutely. And I think you know, that is just so, so magic, that statement, because a lot of people, as I said, this is, this is where a lot of rubbish got put up onto to Udemy because people yeah. were chasing the sale and you can, and you can tell it, you can tell somebody who's passionately wanting to help people and then 
the, the income just comes as a side benefit. It, it, the, the income comes, like you see, it's like it, like, like it might sound cliched and, and it might sound a little bit woo woo, but you know, I've heard it said by so many successful people throughout time and saying, the more people you help, the more successful you will be. Yeah. And you no, know, the thing is with you no know, even you know, Evan Pagan talks about moving the free line, give your best stuff away for free. Now, coming back to, to Facebook ads, um, I think targeting is, is 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 huge when it when it comes to ad targeting. And I just recently did a you no know, did a course on you no know, one many courses on Facebook ads, <laughs> but I'm. Uh, I so said my my premium is actually teaching massage therapists how to create, uh, well, how to find clients basically, or how That's to awesome. become successful. And so it's basically marketing. So it's taking tried and true marketing methods and applying it to the massage industry. So that, that's my premium course. Finding massage therapists on Facebook, as far as a group is concerned, it's hard because the the, the communities, the the groups and sort of stuff aren't big enough for Facebook to give them much credence, right? Right. So I've got to look at you no know, massage associations and, and massage supplies because I think, well, if somebody's in massage, they, they need to buy their oil and whatever. So there are there are ways that I, that I build that. But in, in, in the past, that's how I've targeted. I've just sort of put a great big list in like that and then sent them to a webinar because I do a lot of webinars okay. to to um, then to to pitch my and my product. So and that's been sort of okay. But I learned the other day that you can sort of have uh, an end. So I can I can put a great big list of all these things associated to, to massage therapists and their interests. And then I can say, and then I can define that search and say, but then I only want people who are interested in marketing and promotion and this and that. So it takes, it takes like, say, say I make a quarter of a million person list with, you know, with the massage therapist. Then I put a refined search in and that brings it down to say 140 and what and i've actually got i've actually got an ad running at the moment and i'm finding that my click-throughs are probably i don't know 40 or 50 percent higher and my registrations are also coming along really really well because it's even better targeted so and so that's and and that's another way that if you want to sort of do like okay blab is great and as i said it looks like now that you, know, you can even have an unlisted blab and you can screen share on blab. But the, the problem that we're sort of still missing in, in this scenario is the email list. You know, you're not, you're not going to get their names on the email list when they subscribe to blab. Yeah. Whereas when you have your own webinar, you can obviously build your list because they've got to you know, exchange an email address to get their registration link. So there's always different ways to promote. But yeah, and, and, and Facebook... Uh, sorry, YouTube. YouTube is great. And one thing I learned from from James Wedmore yeah, years awesome. ago is that. Sorry, he's awesome. I, I haven't bought his stuff, but I've watched some of his videos. It's some good stuff for sure. You know, he knows his stuff, and he's saying like even the raw. So when you're naming your video, put the keywords in the name of your video you're uploading to YouTube, because even though your audience won't see the name of the video, Google does. Yes, and so so that's so that's another sort of a keyword uh, ranking trick is to name your video just with a bunch of keywords, and the other and the other thing that he says is that then you go through and you create a closed caption and you and, and you go through because because Google well I know it does its best to try to translate but it doesn't do a great job especially when you talk with an Australian accent and it can't work out yeah. what you're saying, right? And some of the things like. You know, like I say today, and it and it and it says to died, and I went all right. So I speak like that. So to actually go in and, and type in the closed caption, that then gives Google something else to to search on as well. So there's there's lots of tricks, but look, I put I put you know, videos up on YouTube two or three years ago. They they actually make my skin crawl. These like they're they're so like to what my video production is now to what it was then yeah. and the audio and everything else. But they are still you no know, those those videos I follow James's uh, formula. They go to a squeeze page, it's generating um, opt ins and they're you no know, they go into my funnel. So yeah, exactly. and that's that's three, four years. So 
YouTube uh, YouTube is a great it's 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 an, it's an evergreen it's an evergreen yeah, it really is and I'm amazed at some of the videos that still get played and again you don't know which ones are really going to take off until you've put them up there and I also embed them onto my website as blogs as well and um, one uh, coach guy I was talking to suggested and I haven't done this for all of them but I did it for some of my top videos is I got them transcribed. And so just made them a blog post on my website because, again, Google can't see the video. They can see the description. They can see the, the title and the tags. But by putting all that text in there from the transcription into your website um, is another great way to kind of get more traffic. And uh, I was like, oh, okay, that's, that's really smart. I'm not going to transcribe every single one. I might once I maybe have the budget to do that. Um, I just hired somebody on Fiverr or Upwork for that, and um, it made a really mm. difference. And um, just going back again to you, the Facebook quickly with the ads, I know everybody talks about them, but it's just because they work. You know, and just such a narrow targeting. And um, I was doing the lookalike audience too. Like once my email list got to about a thousand, two, three, and up, I would upload that to to Facebook and create the lookalike audience. And for those people who don't know what that is, it basically takes those emails that you have uploaded, all those people that already opted in, so they're already targeted. Upload them to Facebook, and then Facebook says, okay, out of all those emails that you sent me, we're going to go look into our database and find more people like that. And so they create an audience of like, I think the smallest that they can create is like a million um, pool. And then, but they look similar and have the similar attributes of the email list you have. So as your email uh, gets bigger, you re-upload it again and create a more targeted uh, uh, audience on Facebook, which is with some pretty, pretty powerful stuff um, that you can do. Like, I just going back to before that, I like I think about how would I have marketed myself previously, you know, like it's just so powerful to to put your information in front of the right person. And the same thing with the with the um, the Google AdWords, you can take your training video. If you're doing a video of you talking camera or maybe it's a you just sharing the screen, you can put that video in front of somebody else's video on YouTube. Um, and promote yourself and, and just put yourself in front of the exact age or if it's a male or female or somebody's channel, like your competitor's channel, you can like target their channel or target their Facebook page of your competitor. Like, like it's, it's pretty, pretty awesome. I, I, I haven't looked at it yet, but I, I believe on, on YouTube, you can, you can put your ad over a specific video so that, you know, you know those, those lead in ads that you can sort of watch five seconds of or whatever before the actual full video starts. Apparently you can actually target. Yeah. Down to the video. Was... You can find the exact <laughs> video. Like, like it's, it's almost rude in a sense. It's like, Hey, you know, I'm just going to put my stuff in, in front of yours. But like, you know, it's uh, again, I, and I think it's the wild, wild west still. I think really people are underestimating YouTube a lot. I liked uh, Jake Larson from that. Um, but that, you know, and that's one of the, the courses that I taught that actually I didn't know people were so interested in um, from both the music and business angle, because I think Facebook seems to be the hot one, but I think honestly, there's an opportunity on YouTube and I'll just be honest coming from a, a, the background of music, like YouTube cuts me good checks, you know? And so I like to invest where I'm, seeing uh, results you know mm, absolutely and then also not to not to forget about things like banner ads and even you know if you've got if you've got a niche course say mm. say you've i don't know say on photography let's let's come to something really really broad right how many photo no photography supply places are there out and about right and, so, and if you can have Know, have have nice banner ads and, and, and sidebar ads and that sort of stuff and have an affiliate program, then you can actually approach these these other businesses and say, hey, can you put my ad on your page? And well, you can do it one of two ways. You can say, put can you put my ad on your page and I will pay you X amount or put my ad on your page and you will get a, an affiliate commission of 40% of every sale that I make. Right. And then all of a sudden, like, like who want, who, who doesn't mind paying 40% for traffic they didn't even generate? Considering then you you are then now bringing their their traffic to your site and getting their email addresses. So it's actually building your list. Yes. And um, so like I said, what I, what I did for my premium initially is I, following Evan Pagan's course, I had 
WordPress, with Optimized Press, with Wishlist Member, with uh, with an affiliate program called Affiliate WP, and it's just all these things all sort of chunked together, and and it came together quite well. Don't get me wrong, it, it, it I, I was happy with it, and 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 that setup there probably cost me because um, I had to buy like the like the premium of everything right, for what right. I had to do. Uh, it, it still cost me less than a thousand US dollars to set up, but it was still it was still like a, a jig like a jigsaw puzzle, and the pieces some pieces didn't sort of fit as cleanly as I would have liked. And uh, then I was in, I was on a on a summit called the Authority Super Summit or something, and I was listening to Russell Brunson. And, uh, and not, but not only Russell Brunson, a lot of these other authorities, and they were talking about these these value ladders and this and that. And and anyway, I ended up getting a free trial to, to ClickFunnels. Oh, and okay. probably over the last month, I've transferred everything over to ClickFunnels and I've taken the full the full package and the full package is quite expensive per month, but it gives you a shopping cart. Now, if I wanted a shopping cart, I didn't have a shopping cart on my other site, but if I, if okay. I want a shopping cart, like even Sam cart and this sort of stuff costs you about 99 bucks a month. It wow. gives you, um, it gives you an, a, a built-in affiliate system like that is just absolutely unbelievable. It's, it's the same affiliate system that, that Russell uses himself for his multi-million dollar business. So it's got all the bells and whistles. It has a, a, a contact management system, which is a, amazing. It, like, like somebody signs into your your uh, your list, it actually looks at that. It takes that that email address and, and goes and looks at it on social and looks around the internet and, and, and gives that gives that person a status like like a value based on that. You know, where where is that email? So ab absolutely incredible. You really find you really find like know who that customer is because like that's like so valuable. Like I have all these <laughs> emails and I, it would be great to know maybe a little bit more about them and target them differently. That's and, right. Uh, I, I definitely, I'm only on Mailchimp, and I'd say definitely that's one of the areas I need to uh, continue to to build on. Sure, I have automation set up and whatnot, but uh, I think as, as someone's business grows, like with all that tagging and stuff like that, so that if this person clicks on this email, then they'll get sent this email and go through here, and uh, you know, have something so automated, like not just okay, they went through your one campaign. Well, what happens after that? Like, you know, I wrote all these amazing blogs that were very valuable. Those should get added to the pipe later on so mm -hmm. that somebody gets that and they're constantly, you know, like I think it was Brendan Burchard's or someone like that said like, you know, he doesn't, you don't get a sale from him until he's given you enough value, you know, and uh, have that built on. And I think, uh, you know, going back to the whole Udemy and stuff and creating courses, um, you can get caught up in creating and creating and something new, something new, but as opposed to going back and looking at the business and I think fine tweaking it. And, you know, Tim, me personally, like that's something where I think I need to spend a little bit more time and, and fine tune and adding more so that I can like, I, I think it's the, the idea of I need to work on the business a little bit more as opposed to just working in the business, but like, no broad picture. How can I, cause I'm already spending money on Facebook ads or YouTube ads, doing interviews and getting people in the funnel. Well, am I making sure that I'm really treating those people right? Are they, am I, are we taking them on a good journey? Hmm. You know, that, that would, you know, make them want to eventually buy and, and help them out. You know, uh, uh, so I'm definitely going to have to check out click funnels um, mm. I forget what the other one someone suggested to me get response, but I, I keep hearing more and more about click funnels. Click I know. Funnels, yeah. yeah. I heard it's I pretty user friendly too, isn't it? It's very user friendly. Well, it, there, there, there was a learning curve because I've been using optimized press for so long, right. but, but click funnels gave me something that nothing else could give me. And that was one, well, I'm supposed to have things out there, but it gave me one click upsells and downsells. So basically, as I said, like, I've got I've got some massage forms that I, that I developed and I've been selling those for about ten years. So they're so they're so they're beautifully developed and and designed massage forms. And I sell them for for seventeen dollars with bonuses. So you now now you get you get six six different massage intake and reporting forms, and you get these bonuses, and that's a whole seventeen dollars. And that's and and that and that's where that, that's where that that transaction used to stop, right? But now what happens is when when people click yes, I want that seventeen dollar item, the next thing it says is but wait, there's more. Now, would you like to get my course 
which normally at the moment I've stripped it down and it's selling for 97 on its own site and it, that will go up to 197 but I said this is just like a, a restructure uh, deconstruction and now I'm just testing the market and I'll say that normally sells for $97 over on massagemarketingmastery.com but if you take now you've got 15 minutes to make up your mind folks if you want that for half price you can have it now and it's and, and all it is and, and and it's not even a big sales page the 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 video goes for five or just less than five minutes and it says just let me tell you about it I, I talk about the one one major thing they'll learn in there and then do the pitch and then they and then they click the button and that's what they do they, they click the button because they've already put their credit card information in already they don't have to it just just adds it to the car they've already right? got their they've already got their credit card out and so like someone said to me you know someone's already put their hand up they've taken out their wallet now is the time to just drive it yep. you know a buyer um, is a buyer is a buyer right and then the next step is like the same sort of thing i've got a, i've got a six a, my my continuity is currently priced at 47 a month and that's and that's two well that's, that's fortnightly live calls so it's, it's it's actually my time so we do a training and then we do a live coaching so that's 47 dollars a month that's my because I, I always believe there has to be some live element in, in a course that, that you're there to to guide instruct to have some to give them some accountability like they you know to make sure they're actually implementing what you're teaching because just buying a course and putting it on, on your computer isn't going to give you a result you've got to encourage them to go through and actually do the course implement the information otherwise and, and get the result like you might get a, a one-star review because they say oh, i got the course and nothing changed in my life yeah good on you did you actually open up the first lecture right yeah so yeah. I always believe there has to be some sort of live now whether you do this i know a lot of people now a lot of instructors are coming across to blab to have this live interaction with their students and everything else and it's great because this is i think it's a, a very very important thing is that static videos yeah you can you can teach theory and now we're you now you, you, now we're building relationship right so so once again they can come in and, and they can buy a six-month membership to the continuity program at a discounted price and if they if they click no to that then they can get a free trial for 14 days and then go into so you know you get these upsells down sales but it's all happening just with with one click and that's why i had to sort of come over to to um to click funnels. funnels to do that yeah. but uh, i've got i've got multiple websites so i've i've, I've got websites because i've got a background in natural health and, and essential oils so i've got i've got all these different funnels i think i think you know, over the last month i've set up 24 funnels so there's, oh. there's um you know like it's, it's crazy it's there's there's squeeze pages and and courses and all sorts of stuff it's it's huge and that's why i've been offline i've i haven't done a, a podcast i'm i'm getting i'm getting back i'm getting back to that now but right, um, yeah, right. I, I, I've just been sort of snowed under trying to learn ClickFunnels, get this set up because, as I said, it isn't a cheap like like it. It's, it's a premium thing, but for me, like it's just it makes sense because, especially now with the affiliates, I think we, we, we've got to come. Yeah, exactly, Dave. ClickFunnels does rock. It's like <laughs> you, you can create anything on there, anything at all, yeah. like any site, it, and then and then you can, you know set up your you know, your blog on it and you don't even have to have a website you can you can buy a domain name and then just just uh through through cloudflare just redirect across to click funnel so it looks like it's coming off your main domain so you, you don't have to pay for hope like it's, it's everything in a box but you know this this isn't about click funnel today it's about um no promotion but what, what what we're coming what we're coming back to is that i think it's very important that if you have a premium and and you're off Unimi, one of the things that you must look at having is an affiliate program because that is going to be your army to go out and they're going to go out to their tribe and they're going to send their traffic to you and right. it it really you know cuts down on your marketing because they're shooting you no know, they're, they're they're building your list for you and then obviously yep. they expect you to look after their tribe they, they expect you to provide them value and also they expect some some money in return but mm -hmm. I think affiliate programs is good. Now, does anybody have any questions at all? Or I'm just going to open up this seat. But while I'm opening up this seat, Chris, is there anything that you want to particularly mention that we haven't mentioned yeah. so far? Yeah, I just want to say just uh, two things. First is when, you know, people are going through your funnel or whatnot, when you're talking about upselling and downselling, you know, having that tripwire there, if it's like a smaller item, like when I added that, 
it was amazing that I got some sales um, there by just having it there, like just putting the opportunity there. You'd be surprised that people will click on it. And I think I had an ebook on there that was similar to what I was selling. And, and uh, you know, you go through other people's because I, I remember buying something of someone else's and I was like, I need that on my funnel because yes, they're giving me something free, but they also gave me the ability to buy now. And we can't get afraid of that. We have to be willing to just put it out there, you know, because like if you don't put it up for sale, people aren't going to buy it. And I also wanted to share because we're talking about Udemy versus premium. And I just want to say like there's a mindset shift that took place for me when I sold a 297 product. You know, like it changed for me because I, because again, I think it really comes to us believing that we're worth that. And once we've done it, it's like, okay, I can do this. Cause I remember first my goal was, okay, I'll see if somebody buys it at 37 and then it's 97 and then it's 197. And, and, and you know, and I think that we need to just really, it just comes to a, a mindset shift to just to say, Hey, no, I, I this is worth 997. This is worth 1997 because at, what, what I've been taught is that, uh, it takes just as much work to promote a $97 product as it does, you know, a four ninety seven dollar mm. product, right? Um, all it is is targeting and just our perception of the way we brand ourselves and position ourselves. And I think that's really important. Is that you know by putting yourself on something at Udemy or putting yourself somewhere else, you are positioning yourself and um, and who you're associating as well too. I think is um, is really important too. And I and I know for me, you know the I, I've I've sold. Lots of 297. Um, I haven't sold a 997 yet. Um, you know, sold uh, you know other higher priced coaching and whatnot. But uh, and and again, it's just I think getting in the game and and believing in yourself that you can do it. Um, and you you'll, you'll, you'll shock yourself when someone buys. You'll just be like, holy crap! Like, okay, I I can do this. You know. I think it's very important. I think there there, there is a misconception. I don't know whether it's an excuse or something that people say. Uh, the the market will dictate the price, and yeah. that's not and that's not true at all. You dictate the price. It's up, but it's up to you to translate the value to the market. And when you translate the value to the market, you then you're in control of the price. Like so, we come back to you know, to Russell Brunson, and he goes to a a, a seminar with uh, what's his name, Dan Kennedy, and so he's, he it's, it's right. cost them it's cost them about twenty five thousand dollars for a weekend, right? <laughs> Anyway, Russell Brunson's got a top end product. Twenty it's twenty five thousand dollar coaching product, right? And he's in the room, he's in the meeting, and somebody else who's at this conference says, So what do they get after twenty five thousand? And Russell says, What do you what do you mean? Twenty five thousand is a lot of money. And and he says, and this guy says, No, you've got to have something for the people who who bought the twenty five thousand to go on to. And it's once again it's it's this it's this mindset shift. And now Russell's got this million dollar thing. Now people people don't actually go out and spend a million dollars. What they do is they go out and they spend a hundred thousand dollars for Russell's team to go in, and Russell's team does all the work. Okay, so they set up his they set up the, the company's funnels. They do everything yeah. right, and then and then they take a percentage of the of, of the profits up to a million dollars. So no, it's it's you've you've got to it's how you sell it. Right? Yep. And if yep. and if it's the same, it doesn't matter what what business you and I like. I like I, I tell massage therapists like when people say, "Oh, you know, there's there's five discount massage places down the road, and they're all charging fifty bucks. How can I charge a hundred bucks?" And I say, "Because you translate the value. Like if you if if somebody does want to come and pay you a hundred dollars, you haven't translated the value of your service to them. You haven't right. you haven't convinced them that they are going to get a hundred dollar value or more." Mm -hmm. back out the other side so yeah, and that's where the bonus is and the when it comes to online marketing is just like you got to talk about transformation and what your life what their life is going to look like once they've gone through this you know what will it feel like to have you selling courses you know making money while you sleep what is it going to be like to have lost that weight and what it'll do for you and your family and your heritage it's like you really got to sell the transformation and 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 I always find it's really important to lead with story and let people know that you're human, you know, mm -hmm. um, and that you're a real person. Uh, because I think if you just try and just jump into the sale on the product, like people don't connect to that. People connect that you know you're real. 
Absolutely. I'm just, Dave's, Dave's just got to go, so I won't type. I'll say thanks, Dave, for your support. Great to have you on the call today. Um, and uh, yeah, enjoy the rest of your, I suppose, afternoon, evening. Yeah, look, I, I think. Yeah, no, there's no, there's no questions yet. I think I think we've been doing such a wonderful job, just uh, <laughs> fire hosing with some. Well, we are talking some some pretty high level uh, strategies here as well. Like you are right. No strategy is so. I'm oh, sorry, transformation is so important. Like you see, P90X. Like that's a, always one that comes up when we talk about transformation before and after. Now people people don't care, and and also the thing is that people don't necessarily want to have the magic bullet. They, if P90X says this is the hardest thing you're ever going to do in your life, right? They're not they're, they're not saying this is going to be easy. They're saying this is going to be the hardest thing you're going to do in your life. But look, this is a before and after, before and after. Before. These are these are the results when people do the hard work. That's right. So, and what I and and, and there are very simple ways. Okay, so what's it what, what's it called? Um, it's called forward scripting or something like saying when you know, when you're saying imagine, imagine, imagine. And you're selling the benefit of the benefit. So, so you now we say what if because a lot of a lot of people, and this is something too, when it comes to promotion and marketing, there's a lot of people that they're so tied up in their course or in their product, and they talk about the features. It has this. It has this. It has this. this right. And they're not talking about how that translates into a benefit. Or and and when and when you when you're talking about your marketing, you say let's talk about air conditioning in a car so you go you go to a showroom and the and the the salesman says and the car's got air conditioning you go yeah great like it doesn't mean anything it's a feature what's the benefit of, of air conditioning well it, it's going to cool your car down on a hot day right that's that's pretty good too right but what's the benefit of the benefit the benefit of the benefit is that you can be driving down you know the coast on a really hot day with the windows up you know, as cool as a cucumber, and if and everybody else is out there, you know, sweating and, and sweltering and, and being totally uncomfortable, and you're just, you know, the cool guy, you know, sit back, you know, with your music blaring and your whatever. That's that's that you no, know, that's that's forward casting. That's 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 putting them into a position which sounds pretty groovy, and 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 the way that especially some of the things I say in like in, in my promotion is. What if I show you how to increase your hourly rate by five dollars an hour? Just do the math, right? So if I if I show you how to increase your hourly rate by five dollars an hour, and you average just twenty hours a week, and you work fifty weeks of a year, that's five grand, right? Right so there. I have no problem right. giving you two ninety seven or three ninety seven if my result is going to be here, and you know transformation but then all also the benefits and, and and what that will do like and then it's a no-brainer but it's i guess it's that's where it comes to are we mess is our messaging lining up with that and is it clear is it really look good and you know i gotta be honest like again i think it comes back to you know us going back to our businesses and looking at our funnels and saying hey am i really messaging this because you know sometimes you just you set it and you forget it and you're okay i'm on to the next thing especially coming back to that whole udemy thing it's like oh i'm just going to create another course it's like no well mate is my messaging right because you know we all want to make more money and um maybe that's not about uh creating another course or creating another product maybe that's about tweaking what we already have and, and improving on it and making it better because um, one thing I heard is it's like it's it's really important to have your your one grand slam like your one like main product like I, I look at these you know Michael Hyatt's or Brendan Burchard's or Jeff Walker's that just have their their one that is just the smash hit and I'll be honest coming from the music industry you know having one hit song will do more than 10 albums you know I'll make mm. more money off of one set well same thing with online marketing and courses is just having that that one that is your uh, your focus and, and I guess come to like um coming back to like what you're known for tim and what i'm known for what what is that and be that i don't know if you want to call it guru or spe expert in that but sure and you can have other offshoots but i think really having that one and really nailing that home that's what i was talking to, to dave about because i think as entrepreneurs we get that syndrome of just wanting to do this and that shiny object oh and i want to go there and i yeah. want to go here it's like, no let's just really own 
own that and 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 to just really make sure all the messaging and everything's right and, and sell that at the high price there. But uh rambling on again, but no, you're not no no because you tip no, you're not rambling at all. You know, this is like if people go out and actually you know apply this, it's gonna it's, it's gonna change things because we're gonna come well, back to well, the twenty eight uh the eight the twenty eighty rule or the eighty twenty rule, whichever way you want right. to say. And and basically, you know, eighty percent of 80% of your income is going to come from 20% of your clients. Now, I even say to my massage uh, therapist clients who, are, who I teach in marketing to is that, yes, you do need to keep on adding clients to your funnel because clients do come and go. They you know they move away or whatever else. You know, they might find another therapist who, who relates better to them, whatever. So you do need to put more people in. But – Look at who you've already got and spend because a lot of time, and this happens you know, when we're trying to get students and trying to get clients, trying, it doesn't matter what business we're in. We focus on getting the new one through the door instead of fostering the relationship with the ones who've already been. And right. the point is the ones who've already been have already spent money with you. So they're more likely to spend money with you because you've already, you've already crossed that bridge. Whereas every new one that you you approach, you've got to go through your sales pitch and, 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 and you've got to persuade them and everything else and, and you've got to bring them into that sales mode. Mm -hmm. And it costs and it costs money. It it, it that doesn't matter it doesn't matter where your you know your clients are coming from, even on Udemy. Like if Udemy generates an organic sale for you, how much do they take? Right. So, and that's why I think promotional announcements work so well on Udemy as well, too. Um, if you're not doing promotional announcements, I encourage people to do them out there. Um, you've already got buyers again, they've already yes. pulled out their wallet. And, and I think that's why I found them so successful. Uh, again, uh, if they've already bought in all your stuff, you obviously maybe you need to bring a new one and maybe the ones that you're sending to those, you need to put those ones at the top so they see them. And I think people forget too that, you know, uh, if I want to learn something like say about money or getting out of debt, I might not just buy one book out of getting out of debt. I'm going to buy two, three, four. Like most people are buy more than one motivational book. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I think that's um, really important to think about as well. Mm, no, absolutely. But saying take, look at, look at what you've got because what you've got is an asset. Like you, like your student list, your email list, your client list, whatever it is, is an asset. And you want to take them through an ascension. So, so you want to take them on a on a journey and take them up a ladder. So, okay, so they've spent fifty dollars with you. Now you want to work with them and develop a relationship. They're going to spend a hundred. Now they're going to spend five hundred. Now they're going to spend a thousand. Now they're going to spend ten thousand. Right? That's where your focus should be. Your focus should be in developing those systems that that naturally progress them. Right? So mm -hmm. basically, and Another thing I learned from, from, um, what's his, what's his name? See, ah, uh, it's more, see, no, no, um, Russell Brunson. So I've run out of coffee. See, run, run out of coffee. <laughs> okay. Russell Brunson is that you don't always sell more of the same thing, right? You sell related stuff. So say, say, say my first one is massage forms. And I say, now you probably need some more clients to fill out those forms. So the next thing I sell them, I don't sell them more massage forms. I sell them, a training on how to get more clients, right? And then within that training, the bonuses aren't more about getting more clients. The bonuses are about how to position yourself as a specialist and how to get more value out of each client by charging more per hour, right? Yes. Or how to set up, how to do a newsletter to stay in constant contact to remain front of mind with your clients. So everything is different. Like like it's, it's, all, it's all related, but you're not selling more of the same, more of the same. Right. Yeah, and I've and I've bought into that because I'm in a membership for online business. Um, uh, they're called uh, Shane and Jocelyn Sams, and um, they're helping me to sell online products and doing exactly what we're talking about. I, I have a coach. Well, I was I think I bought a coaching call with them before that, but then I joined their membership. But then I joined their mastermind. And so I went up the Ascension ladder and guess what I'm going to do for my list. I have my course buyers. I have my membership model that are giving me. And so now I just got to come up with the right offer. 
And that, that's what you're mm-hmm. talking about, which might be a thousand dollars, might be two thousand dollars. And but I need to look at that and say, okay, what is it that I'm offering that's right? And if and if they're not buying, then that's what I think we need to look at is is the offer, right? And make sure you're offering something that people are going to bite on and making sure there is that scarcity in there and that this is limited time and you know this the time's running out and 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 mm. adding all those things in there because people are procrastinators. That's that's one thing that I was like just blown away with because when I launched um, certain things. Sometimes I launched it with a deadline and without, and I'm amazed when I put that deadline and hammer them with that emails. Like one of the things that a Jeff Walker's book launch, uh, I'll never forget him saying, you know, you're going to get more tired of your marketing than other people are. And mm-hmm. I remember someone responding to me and I was like, I wasn't going to send this email. Okay. And I think it was the third one. Cause it was, cause I sent, it was, we're closing that night and I sent one in the morning and then the afternoon, and then I think at night, or it may have just been two, one in the morning, one at night. But that one at night, I was scared to send right before, you know, I think it was 5 p.m. I was going to send it because we're closing at 11.59. And the person responded and said, thanks for reminding me. And uh, and, and they bought. And I was just mm-hmm. like, see, like, you know, you it's like people procrastinate and you, and you don't know like if they're going to miss it. And that's well, obviously you gotta, we're going into more details. You got to learn how to treat your list right. And that's during a proper product launch and, and launching, but, uh, you know, it's important to, uh, let people know because other, and, and add that scarcity and, and remind them also, they're not going to take action. Mm. Yeah. It's the same. Like it, it's people do worry about spending, sending too much to their list. And like I, I, I did a copywriting course with Ray Edwards and I said, I've done all these courses and they all say like, send something every day like people are going to unsubscribe from your list if you only send them something once a month or, or once every two weeks they're going to forget about you send right. something every day but just make sure that it's it's interesting or relevant or entertaining like you don't even have even have to because you're trying to build a relationship with these people you're trying to nurture them it doesn't have to be anything about business it can just be about something that happened to you that day that you're going to 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 share like once again coming back to russell brunson he talks about the seinfeld uh emails which is basically that it's just it's an email about nothing but it's yeah. you know it's, it's it's once again it's just it's keeping that the communication entertaining make it entertaining don't try to be too funny because they might not get your jokes and they might just think you're weird but make it entertaining <laughs> and you know yeah. and it doesn't even have to be your content either it could be somebody else's but if you're just like hey check this out i thought you right. would like this they're gonna be like thank you right mm. curation Finding finding good content that's no that's a that's, that's a that's a, a, a fantastic list building. And look, look, I know even with my even with my Twitter, once I once once I started blasting out um, you know, affiliate offers and and information about my courses and information about this and information about that, my Twitter following has gone up. Like I I get I get I don't know how many like it's not it's not enormous, but I get you no know, thirty or forty new followers a week sometimes more and i'm actually and, and i'm actually sometimes i'm tweeting every 15 minutes right so right. Don't, so don't be afraid like look at the end of the day if people don't like it they can always unsubscribe but no harm's done guys that seat is unlocked if, if you want to pop on quickly and have a chat with, with with chris or myself because we've been going for an hour now so yeah for some scarcity i gotta get going here in a little bit so bring ask yeah. us some questions if you have anything course creation marketing we're here to help you out and just you know you can't ask us a an embarrassing question for yourself or us we just want to help you out so yeah there's no such thing as a silly question you say my good friend uh phil ebner's here good to see you phil i hope everything is is going uh is going well phil's uh, another prolific uh i've seen phil online i haven't met him personally yet what's up phil love your stuff man see phil dennis on there i mean dennis have chatted a couple times yeah, like Phil's Phil's uh, basically a full time instructor these days. Who else have we got? Um, Sandra, welcome. And turning off gravity. That we got a question here from uh, Yay, from Juan Valdez. What's the the best way to vet your out? your outline for your new course. You want to take that or you want me to take that one? You can take that one. 
Um, I find the best in, in going back to the whole Udemy thing, Udemy has really set it up so that you can put your course together. Um, if you haven't created an account yet there, I encourage you to do that and sign up to be an instructor. And they really walk you through the process of putting your course together before I, um, or, or when I'm putting a outline for my course, sure. I, I write it all down what I want to teach. Sometimes I'll research the, 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 what are the most popular search terms on Google, but then I'll put it in you to me so I can see it and be like, okay, I got to cover that topic. Got to cover that topic and just kind of brain dump it out there. Don't worry about it being perfect. Just get it up there, get it uploaded in you to me so you can see it because then when it comes down to creating the lectures, you can be like, okay, I create that lecture upload the video and you're kind of chopping away at it. And, and you to me, there's tons of free courses on there too, on how to create stuff. I'm sure Tim, you have a Udemy course. I have a yeah. Udemy <laughs> course on how to create courses. Um, check those out. Um, Phil has, uh, I think a free one there too. Uh, so definitely check that out, but just, just get started, man. Like outline it doesn't have to be perfect. It's, it's, I forget the quote there. It's better to be done than to be perfect. And just, Throw it out there. And when you're creating that thing, just keep thinking to yourself, how can I help someone? How can I provide value? Yeah, that's great. And I'll just add to that too. Uh, don't try to create the uh, comprehensive or definitive course. One problem, one solution. I always come back to the golf and saying, don't go out and try to create a, a course on how to play golf. Cut up into pieces. Create a course on how to improve your drive. Then create another yeah. course on how to and especially in, the, in a Udemy environment, you're going to make more money and be more used to people to to cut these these courses into into one problem, one solution. And yeah, yeah like like you're looking at around about an hour or an hour and a half content, and uh, that's that's pretty that's pretty good. We've got a, we've got a caller, and then hey guys, safe. Hey, hey how, Dan, you how are you? How you doing? Sorry, I'm new to Blab Chat. I'm not sure if I'm supposed to be intruding like this or just watching no, others. No, you've no, you've done right. No, the seat was open, and we've we've invited people to jump on and have a chat. So, okay, cool. I'd like to introduce yourself and ask a question. Yeah. So, uh, my name is Tom, and I'm with the Safe and Ready Institute. You guys are piquing my interest here with online course promotion stuff. Um, I, I uh, just recently started this you know, online ed tech uh, learning platform really focused around safety and emergency preparedness for, for the workplace. And so I'm trying to learn as much as I can about Udemy and Teachable and all these other platforms um, trying to, the technology I've found is actually the easy part. Um, the hard part is promoting it. And, uh, you know, I'm working with several instructors, so trying to get them to get all their content in and uh yeah it's it's a it's a beast but it's a lot of fun mm -hmm. cool, awesome, I, uh, so. I remember helping a company get iso 9001 registered some safety thing yeah. I remember that just reminds me of that when i was at a company so are you going to teach the course or you're trying to get content from other instructors to teach the course is what you're thinking about so i'm using the teachable platform but that's that's kind of my main home site but i'm also publishing on Udemy and um, some I will be teaching, but mostly, um, you know, I'm trying to share the wisdom of lots of folks who have many more gray hairs and experience than I have. So a whole um, really starting off with like seven courses and coordinating across these presenters, getting a bunch of courses up in like really June, July timeframe. Um, so right now I'm actually, yeah, just spending my spare time doing video editing and making sure their their courses look sharp, getting them fancy, you know, musical intros and uh, trying to make it sound tight. Um, but yeah, so mostly to answer your question <laughs> in the longest way possible, um, mostly sharing uh, other people's stuff and trying to create a mini marketplace. Okay, cool. Very cool. Man. So tell me about what you guys are doing. I just interrupted here. Um, but what are, what's your kind of uh, experience with online course uh, and getting it rolling? Well, for me, uh, I started, I guess, in 2014. I created my first course um, on Udemy. 
uh, it started as writing a book uh, before that. Uh, but I heard about Udemy and teaching and um, through a podcast called Internet Business Mastery. And so I just uploaded a quick course. Um, I come from the music industry. Um, I actually do music full time is my main thing. But, I'm, you know, I really love Internet marketing and really just jumped into this uh, online course business. It's becoming a, a really large part of my income. And so I created a course, put it up there. And I was just amazed at the passive income it started to develop. Um, I really don't like trading my time for dollars. I like to create something once and get paid for it over and over again. And that's what um, you know I love about books. I love about creating courses, eBooks. You know, even coming from the music industry, I write a song once and I continue to get paid over it for years. And um, those become assets. And so I uh, and and just helping people, you know, uh, creating something and, right. and, and selling it. And uh, we really devalue what we know. And I'm sure coming from your business, Safe um, and Ready, some of the courses and the things that you have to go through to get someone safety ready or a business or whatnot and the checklist and different things. There's um, tons of stuff I'm sure you can create. Sorry, I don't know where the mute button is on this. Got my wife in the background blending something. <laughs> <laughs> All good. My daughter was crying there, making a little noise yeah. there a minute ago. Cool. Hmm. Well, that sounds cool. Um, um, yeah, you, you've definitely been at this a little longer than I have. I've, I've done uh, years in the training development, but but really it's been the self-paced online, you know, those terrible Moodle type platforms that are just uh, there's so many reasons why I think this Udemy t style of learning, the sort of MOOC, um, edX, Coursera style learning is better. But, um, but yeah, really doing those in webinars, which webinars are great too, but um, this, oh, we've got a visitor. My son just walked in. Um, hey, buddy. Um, so, uh, so, yeah, how, how about you, Tim? Yeah, but... Much the same as Chris, I've been creating online content. Good day, mate. I've been uh, I've been creating online content for, for quite some time, even before 2013, probably around 2011, 2012. Been doing a lot of YouTube tutorials in the natural health. I've, I'm a I'm a I've studied herbalism and uh, and aromatic medicine, so I'm into to herbs and essentials and everything else, and how to how to use that. My my son has had cancer twice. He's oh, wow. he's turning twenty one in a couple of in a couple of months. So, and how, but not 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 how to cure people with natural therapies, but how to actually support them while they're undergoing chemo and everything else, and wow. keeping their bodies as strong as possible. That's so, cool. I, I've done a lot of co uh, coursework there. I've also got a background in elite sport, not as an athlete, but as once again as a as a therapist. And, and so, I did a did a course on how to how to strap. That was actually the first course I put up onto. Udemy, and the only reason why I went up to Udemy is because I was trying to self-host, but I couldn't get all the bits of the piece puzzle together to to uh, to host it on my own site. I was, I was trying to host it using a an LMS plugin, and and the the e-commerce wouldn't work because my host security was too tight and wouldn't let the API, API calls go through. So just out of desperation, I put it up on Udemy. So that's that that's that's where that was, and now. Uh, I've got I've got a podcast. I've got a website called ecoursedomination.com. So basically, I I help online course creators cool. get off the fence and and actually start creating. So this is what these interviews are about. Okay. So 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 ecourse domination is uh, like if, if you go there, you'll, you'll find all the all the past podcasts and and, and you probably find enough there to actually make a course, promote it, sell it, whatever, all for free. Um, wow. And then I also. My but my premium course is actually teaching massage therapists how to market. So how to, how to take proven marketing strategies and apply them in the massage industry. That's where my premium. So it's, it's an online course slash uh, membership site slash whatever whatever. So that's that's my that's my background there. So yeah, been doing been teaching offline. There's always been a, a teaching component for uh, for the, about the last thirty years. Teaching in the workplace, in the workshops, or in the classroom. So. Just coming on to, to uh, oh, there's Vicky. Hey, Vicky, coming on to coming online was just a natural progression to that. Very cool. Yeah, I'm just checking out your website here. Uh, Tim, uh, on Udemy, how many courses do you have? I only have four there at the moment um, because I started. I, I actually started a 
another one during Black Friday, and it was actually how to. Uh, it was called courses that sell. So it was actually how to do the groundwork, how to validate a, a topic, and, and whether it's going, it was going to be a, a a topic that sold, but also then where to get the content, how to, like how to work out how to get into the mind of the student before you, instead of doing this, create it, and they will come. And hopefully they will come, but maybe they won't. So how to actually create a course that's actually answering the questions that are out there, which will automatically do your marketing for you. Because if, if, if somebody can see that, oh, geez, I've been asking that question. How did you know, Tim know I need that question answered? Well, Tim went off and did research. He, he looked at forums and he looked at all this, all, all, this, all this conversation that's already on the internet and looked at all the questions that were being asked and then created a course to answer those questions. So that was that was another course I was creating during Black Friday, but I found you know, the timeline, it, it, it was a big competition and you had to have this finished by this and this finished by this, this finished by this. And I lost, I, I just lost focus. I, I just got so blue. I, I, wasn't, I wasn't able to go through my normal process because I, I, I mind map everything. I, I like to use MindMeister and I, and this was just, I. I sat back one day and went, "No, this is this is this is not right. I'm I'm not I'm not producing this. This course is just all over the place. It's got no continuity. It's, not, it's got no flow because I'm just trying to you know, do all this by these by these deadlines." And so I, I never finished that course. And then mm. the uh, then the, 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 that course will come, but it won't it won't be issued on it won't be available on Udemy now because with their pricing structures. Right. And uh, and so then yeah then then, then Udemy sort of chopped and changed and I, I started I just started to get a bit of a bad feeling about what was happening in certain areas of Udemy like I said Udemy is great for for what it is right but it's not right. for me so that's why now I've taken my courses off Udemy and I'm, and I'm self-hosting on, on on ClickFunnels and whether and I said whether I'm going to use whether I'll use Udemy as a lead generation as I used to teach Will we get to be seen? Because now with this cap, as I, as I said to Chris earlier, I just don't know whether Udemy is a good lead generation into premium courses now because of the the market that Udemy is attracting. That yeah. being said, though, I have been asked to co-create some health-related courses with somebody else, and I'll probably end up doing five or six uh, courses on Udemy in a as a as a co-instructor. But that but that will just be my content will just go up and. I'll have very little to do with that. Mm -hmm. so. Tim, I got to bow out here. I apologize, man. But uh, that's no, is... good. No, thank you very much for no thank thank you very much for your time because you, you know you shared a wealth of information. I said like I, I really would hope that people take this on board because it is a major question. Like no, I've got my course now. What? So you you shared some really really you know, important and useful information there with us, Chris, and I, I really do appreciate you you spending the time yeah. and and, we, and and we've got the, we've got the day right too, which is uh... yeah. yeah, I'm glad. Sorry about that yesterday. My apologies, man. And uh, no, it's great. We had a good 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 people, and I, I felt like I learned some stuff. So I hope some other people learned some stuff too. And let's take action. Let's connect. I'll definitely email you as well too, and we'll we'll go from there. Absolutely. And if you want to email, if, if you want to drop any links into the into the chat about where people can find you before you before you go, like like your websites okay. or sure. whatever. And if you want to do any sort of uh, offers for the for the uh, podcast when when the podcast goes live, just email me and I'll and I'll set those okay. up on the on the on the blog. You got it, my man. Well, hey, it's great. It's inspiring, encouraging, and hey, it was nice to meet you, man. Nice to meet you. All right. Cheers. Good luck. Thanks, Chris. Bye. Okay. So, so I got a jet in a minute too. It sounds like dinner's just about ready, but um, you, you did mention something of interest here. It's and that's um, podcasts. I've been mm -hmm. um, considering doing podcasts and uh, actually watched a, a YouTube video on, you know, the, the guy who wrote, um, podcast report and uh you know he's he had a wealth of information i've done podcasts before um but the way i did it at my old company um i was shielded from the tech stuff i was the talent so i did the voice mm -hmm. and some audio stuff but not the creating rss feed and web hosting portion so i'm a little lost actually um so i'm curious Number one, like, do you see a lot of value in in promoting your courses? Do you see a lot of people kind of stumbling upon your podcast and then that leading to course hits? And then number two, um, 
you know, any tips on how to host a, a podcast on the cheap? Because that's yeah, what I'm all absolutely. about. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I can help you with both of those. Mm -hmm. Now, the first one is, yes, I think podcasting is great because I think there's still under 300,000 podcasts. I know when I first started, there was probably about 200,000 podcasts versus 2 million whatever blogs. So you actually start to to, to rank in Google and uh, and obviously when on iTunes and these and his podcast directories, you're a lot easier to be found because like if somebody types in online course, you're only competing with maybe five or six other uh, podcasts that are using that particular uh, keyword. So mm -hmm. as far as people stumbling upon you, I've, I've, I'd imagine that most of my traffic would come through my podcast, even though I've been pretty slack of, slack of late. I said I've, I've sort of been been snowed under for about the last two months and I've, I've, I've actually, because I'm a, I'm a course creator, so I'm actually writing a couple of diploma courses for a massage school and that's pretty heavy going because as you know, like this, you know, these, are, these are nationally accredited courses so you can't, so, so the diploma is recognised throughout the entire country. So that's that's really mind mind blowing work. So there's, so there's two diplomas to be written. I was moving my moving my course material over onto another platform. So lots and lots and and actually establishing a new clinic. So there was lots going on. So I actually haven't done a podcast for about four weeks or four or five weeks. So I've got, I'm I'm getting back into that now. But I I, I believe the majority of my traffic comes through podcast and most people would probably know know me more through my through my podcast and my brand at ecourse domination um so and then I, I i created another podcast for my massage marketing course business just specifically to talk about how to market massage business and that's and that's done that's done quite well and that's sort of ranking up around the first one or two in that in that category and that does send send traffic my way so to answer your question yes podcasts are a great way to once again share share good information, share it freely, build the relationships. Um, they get they get to know you, they get to feel for you, they get to know whether they like you or they don't like you. There's some there's some podcasts I click straight off because somebody's talking like this, and there's no way I can sit there for an hour, you know. So if if that's if that's the way they're presenting their podcast, I'm probably not going to be looking at their course or any other material that they do, and this and this is a book. And Tim, let me just apologize in advance. I have. Four percent, three percent battery left on my computer, and I can tell you where my thing is left. So I, I should jet here. Um, yeah. But you know, I I checked out your website. I really appreciate your generosity to share your wisdom with me here today, and um, I'm sure I'll be looking at more at your stuff and hopefully blab chat with you again sometime. For sure, no this worries. And, and just real blab chat. So this is pretty cool. Pretty cool. Okay, just before you go though, I I will I will give you. Hosting, hosting uh, your podcast on the cheap. I'll, I'll tell you how to do it for free. Yeah. You go to mypodcastworld.com, and that's a, a service that's, that's provided by a good friend of mine, Scott Patton, and um, he he provides that that uh, platform totally free of charge. Wow. So you can host all your all your podcast episodes there, and that's and, and you don't even need your own site. It, it basically gives you a a blog and and whatever else although you can take that take that wow. one can't be so that. that's my podcast world.com so so that's where you do it for free i've got i've got one there i've also got one on libsyn i was just sort of i was committed to libsyn with my equals domination podcast and but my second one is done on on scott's site great so wow awesome. that's awesome. Well, nice. i look forward to looking at that for that's sure thunder outside <laughs> nice so are you across okay. the pond I noticed the I accent. Am. Yeah, I'm, I'm I'm living on the beautiful Gold Coast in Queensland, Australia. Although I said it is starting to cool down. I've, this is this is the first morning I've, I've pulled this out. So now I'm starting to get warm because the sun's coming out because it's uh, about eight o'clock in the morning here. So it is starting oh, to warm. Wow. Okay. Yeah, it's late here. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah the next the next day I'm going to do coast of the Sorry. U.S. Six thirty you on on the uh, east coast of the U.S. Six thirty p.m. 6.30. Okay, so it must be, yeah, so it's 8.30 here. Yeah. 8.30 in the morning, the next day. It's, right, it's, it's yeah, yeah. Tuesday. It's already right. Tuesday here. <laughs> cool. Time traveling. Well, it's been nice, Tim. Uh, I really appreciate your time, and uh, I'll check out your stuff. 
Awesome. Thanks, Dom. Nice meeting right. you too. Take care. See you, mate. Bye. Okay, everybody. Like to uh, like to thank you all for attending today. My next my next uh, lab session is actually going to be with Matt McWilliams, and it's all going to be about affiliate marketing. And so, if you we mentioned before how important it was to incorporate affiliate marketing into your online course promotion because then you are tapping into other people's traffic and it it takes okay you're going to share some of the profits but i mean this is a guaranteed sale like i'd sooner give away 40 percent of a guaranteed sale than spend you no know, ten dollars to make us you no know, to try to make a sale that, that doesn't happen so creating a, a an affiliate network in my mind is actually paramount to your success as an online course creator. It helps build your list because saying like your affiliates are going to send you traffic who are going to now enter their email address into your site. And so it helps build your list, builds your tribe. And once again, it just costs you a percentage of the, uh, of the sale. So that's the next, the next uh, podcast. I can't actually remember the date. I think, I think it's around about the 11th of May. I'm going to have, Matt on. So Matt has been involved in a lot of six and seven figure launches, and so the people go, "Oh no, this is no, this is just all all hype and fluff." Well, I'm pretty sure Matt has actually been involved in Michael Hyatt's launches. He's definitely been involved with uh, Ray Edwards' launches. Uh, big big names, big names in the industry, and I said six and seven figure launches. So if you want to know how to build an affiliate program and and launch or promote your premium products or even your udemy products or whatever well, well udemy's got their own affiliate program but definitely something to stop by and listen to now uh chris has dropped in his his information about where you can find more information about him so definitely go along and check out his gear if you want to know more about me you can go to ecoursedomination.com you can check out past episodes of the podcast and everything else if you've got any questions at all once again you are more than welcome to send me an email at ask tim at ecoursedomination.com and i'll be more than happy to answer them for you okay thanks guys thanks for listening thanks for your time thanks for your support and uh, i really do appreciate you guys and i'll see you next time